second chapter, and tonight we want to look at the church at uh, Ephesus. You know, uh, uh, we see that, uh, you know, as we've talked about uh, for a couple uh, services, we looked at the, the first chapter, and uh, we've seen, you know, as Jesus Christ, uh, he uh, said to write this and send it to the seven churches. Now, you know, you have to understand uh, that these seven churches were all on what was considered uh, the, the Roman uh, main road. Uh, these churches were kind of, it wasn't in a circle, but uh, if you begin at Ephesus and you go up, and then they start back down and around. Uh, and, you know, I think that, you know, we can say that uh, as Jesus said, Behold, I stand in the midst of, of these uh, candlesticks, that, uh, you know, you can see that, you know, he was there in the middle of, of all of these. But uh, we see that he also was in, in the middle of each one individually. And uh, we see that as we begin here tonight in uh, uh, chapter 2, uh, we see that these uh, in chapter 2 and chapter 3 are the words of Jesus to the churches. And, you know, we see that uh, as we looked at chapter 1, you know, we've seen uh, the seven uh, uh, things that describe Jesus Christ in the second chapter. In the third chapter, we see the seven churches. And, you know, as we know that this was the completeness of God. And so, you know, we see that uh, as he spoke there to the churches, this was not only to the individual churches. You know, I believe he was talking to these churches. And this letter was circulated through all of these uh, areas, to all these different cities uh, where the churches were at. But it was not only for them, but for all churches down through the age. And we see that as he begins here, he says, Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst bear that them which are evil. And thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles and are not, and have fa has found them liars, and has borne and been patient, and for my name's sake has labored, and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember wherefore that whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first work. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hast hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we come to you this morning, this evening, we just thank you, God, for this day. Father, for all the many blessings that you have given us. Father, for the service we had this morning, and I pray that you would just be with us now in this uh, service. I pray, God, that you would just speak to our hearts, Father, through your word. I pray that you would just use us tonight, dear God, as a, an instrument just to be able to preach what you have preach tonight to the people here at Midland Baptist Church. Father, we just want to thank you and praise you, God, for all that you have done and for what you're doing. And God, we want to thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, we pray that you would just uh, be with me and hide me behind the cross of Jesus, dear God. Father, that my words would not uh, come out tonight, but they would be your words. And Lord, we just give you thanks and praise, Father, for what you uh, have done for us Father, for your your just your love for us. And Lord, I pray that you just forgive us where we fail in you and fall so short of your glory. Be with us now as we look at your word. I pray that you bless it tonight. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. You know, first of all, we see that as Jesus, as he speaks to the church, you know, we see that uh, he says, uh, unto the angel uh, of the church at Ephesus, right. You know, we see that as Jesus, as he begins to speak there, he says, unto the messenger 
write this. And you know, we see that uh, then he, he kind of goes into uh, a little bit of, uh, of who is uh, speaking. You know, we see that these are things that were spoken of back uh, in the first chapter. But we see that he says, uh, the one that is speaking, the one that is dictating this letter, uh, is the one uh, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. You know, we see that the one that is speaking is Jesus Christ. The one that is, uh, as it says there, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. We see that uh, this one that is spoken of here, uh, the one that is being described here, the one that uh, is, is giving this letter is the one uh, who came to this earth and lived and then died on the cross with, uh, and took our sins upon himself and then was resurrected the third day and after walking upon this earth for uh, 40 days we see that he ascended into heaven and, and there he sits on the right hand of the Father. And we see that as we look at this tonight, we see that he goes on there and he begins to commend the church. Now, you know, we see that in each one of these instances, each one of these churches, uh, that there seems to be uh, a little bit of, uh, of things that they're doing right, except for uh, Laodicea. And you know, but we see here that he says unto them, I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you can't bear them which are evil. You know, we see that, uh, that Jesus knows all, that Jesus knows uh, not only the church in Ephesus, not only the church at Smyrna, not only the church at Pergamos, not only uh, the church at Thyatira and Sardis and, and uh, Philadelphia and Laodicea, but he knows the works, the labors of the church in Bethlehem. Amen. And he knows the works and the labors of each church that is serving him. And, you know, we see that he goes on there and he said, you know, we, we know that he knows that this church uh, at Ephesus is a church that, uh, that uh, could not bear that which was evil. And it says, and has tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them life. Now, you know, let's, let's just back up for just a moment and let's take a look at, at the church in Ephesus for what it is. Because we see that the church in Ephesus, uh, we see that it was founded back in the book of Acts. Uh, and we see that uh, Priscilla and Aquila were two of the people that were there uh, at the beginning of the church. And we see that uh, the church here uh, is probably about 50 years old uh, uh, as John is there on the Isle of Patmos. We see that Timothy was one of the pastors of the early pastors of the church. We see that John himself uh, was there at the church at uh, Ephesus. So we see how that God had blessed this church uh, with a group of individuals uh, who uh, were, uh, were, had a good foundation and a good doctrine. And so, you know, we see that as we think about what it has to say here, we see that it says, I know your works and your labor and your patience. You know, Jesus knew all about the church and, and what they were going through. You know, I, I don't think that uh, any church that has ever existed uh, I can rightfully and truthfully say that God doesn't know what we're, what we're up against. Because I believe that as we see here, that God knows all about his church. And he knew about the church in Ephesus. He knew what was going on in Ephesus. You know, Ephesus uh, 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 was a place uh, uh, where uh, <coughs> there was uh, the, the idolatry uh, greater than any other uh, area uh, in the Roman Empire. We see that uh, the goddess Diana, uh, that there was a shrine there to her. There, there was a great amphitheater that would see about 25,000 people. Uh, and it was a great tourist attraction. Uh, the place was uh, where people came. Uh, uh, you know, the, the word Ephesus means desirable. And, and we 
we see that for the world, this was a desirable place to be. And you know, we see that the church was planted in the middle, middle of all this wickedness. <coughs> we see that as uh, the church stood, you know, we see that they were busy as they began. They were busy trying to serve God. They were busy trying to do what God would have them to do. And it says, I know your works and your labors, and I know your patience. And he says, and I know that you cannot bear that which is evil. You know, I'm sure that the early church there in Ephesus was one that would stand uh, against all of the wickedness that was going on. You know, we see that the Apostle Paul, uh, he was there and, and stood against uh, uh, the wickedness that was going on. We see that uh, that he ha had to leave uh, uh, the area because uh, of a uh, silversmith uh, uh, who had uh, riled up the people against him because they were losing uh, uh, those uh, those sales uh, of those statues uh, uh, of those idols uh, because people were coming to Jesus Christ. And you know, we see uh, uh, that when God was beginning to move uh, and people were beginning to be saved uh, and, and there was such a, uh, uh, an outpouring of God's Spirit that Satan uh, uh, began to, uh, uh, to uh, try to uh, uh, distract from what good was going on. And we see here that it says that those that, that came in there, uh, those that were there, that they were trying to do what, was, what, uh, what God would have them to do. The Bible goes on here and it says uh, uh, that uh, uh, there were those that came in there, and many, many must have came in, or some that came in, who said they were apostles. And he said that you have tried them and you have found them to be liars. These were people that came in and were trying to get into the church and, and filter in uh, that uh, they could have some kind of say so uh, to try to draw the people away from the true God. And you know, we see this says uh, that you, uh, you tried them, you tried their works, uh, and you found that they were liars. That they were not who they said they were. <coughs> it goes on there and it says, and, and thou and has born and has born and has patience, and for my sake, namesake, has labored and has not fainted. You know, the church there was one that was trying to do what was right. They were trying to serve God. But then we see that. Uh, after the, uh, the, what God commended them with, there was condemnation. And, you know, we see that there in this first church that it spoke of, you know, we as believers today, we want to hear what the, the good that God might pass on the back with. But, you know, when it comes down to the things that we're not doing right, the things that we maybe uh, have left out, you know, we, we don't want to hear those things. But you know, we see that just as God would say unto uh, the people of Ephesus and unto uh, the people of those other churches, he would also say to us, I know what you're doing. I know what you're going through. But, and you know, we see that uh, in, in verse 4 there, he says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left your first love. You know, uh, we see that uh, whenever, uh, you know, they, they talk about love, you know, we see that if you, what you love, uh, you're going to try your best to, uh, to, to uh, continue on doing it, or you're going to do uh, above and beyond what you normally would. You know, we see that uh, when it comes to, uh, when you love somebody, you're going to uh, sacrifice more. You're going to work harder. You're going to do more. And, and you know, we see that the, the church there, uh, uh, that they had come to the place uh, uh, where they had, uh, uh, they had worked, they had done all these things diligently. And, and now we see that uh, they had come to the place where it says uh, that they had left their first love. They had left off doing what God had called them to do. You know, we see here that the Bible says, uh, uh, as he speaks there <coughs> to the church, 
we see that they had abandoned that love. They had abandoned uh, what they had been called to do as a church. You know, we see that through the ages, uh, there has been a lot of churches uh, that have gone and they have been on fire for the Lord. They have done so much great work for the Lord. But then they get to that place where, uh, what, what do we call it today, burnout? Uh, and, you know, we see that uh, they, they get to the place where they say, well, we're just burnt out. But, you know, we see that as long as we have breath in us, we should be willing to go and to do. We should be willing to do what he has called us to do. You know, that church there in Ephesus, I'm sure, was one that was a going church. You know, I'm sure that it was a church that was excited about Jesus Christ and what he had done for them. You know, just because Paul, uh, excuse me, just because John was there, and just because uh, uh, Paul had, had been there and, and had ministered there, and, and just because uh, uh, of the others that had been a part of that church, uh, and, and you know, we see that John uh, being one of the 12 uh, disciples, uh, and, and Paul being the one who said he was an apostle who was born out of season, uh, and, and because of these others uh, uh, and the, the ones that had walked with Jesus, uh, uh, you know, we see that there was excitement there. There was enthusiasm there. Uh, there was a, a, a love, uh, and it didn't matter what else happened. Uh, they were going to go and do what God wanted them to do. Amen. But then we see that that took place uh, uh, where it says that I have something against you because you have left thy first love. They had taken uh, and they had uh, begun to uh, slack on, on what they should have been doing. And you know, I think that as the, the church, and you know, I, 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 we don't know for sure, but you know, if it's like most churches, you know, we see that we, uh, we make an excuse of why we can't do, and, and then it's not long that we are not doing anything. And you know, I don't know if the church at, at Ephesus was like that, if they were a church that said, well, you know, when Timothy was here, or if they said, well, you know, when Paul was here, we can do this and that, but now that we don't have them, uh, I, we can't do that. But you know, we see that the same Jesus uh, uh, that had established that church uh, at Ephesus uh, is the same Jesus uh, uh, who was now uh, dictating this letter to John and saying to you, uh, to them, uh, I've got something against you because uh, you uh, have taken and left uh, uh, your first love. You have left off doing what you know is right. You know, we see that the, the uh, uh, Jesus, as he spoke, you know, we see that uh, he didn't ask, uh, 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 a, or he was asked, uh, uh, what is the greatest commandment? And, and we see that Jesus said, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord God, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy spirit. Uh, and then he said in the second commandment, is the same, uh, to love thy neighbor. And you know, we see that as you think about that, you know, we see that if we get to the place where that love uh, for God and that love for Jesus it is flickering, uh, uh, it has become weak, uh, uh, you know, then the love for those out there that are lost, uh, uh, it is going to be the same. It is going to be to the place where uh, we see uh, instead of loving them and seeing them as someone who needs Jesus Christ, uh, uh, we're going to say, well, you know, somebody else can tell them. Amen. You know, we see that he goes on there and he tells the church. And, and, and you know, after he, uh, after he gives them the, uh, uh, he, he commends them for the good that they're doing and then he condemns them. He gives them a challenge or, or a warning. He gives them a something that, that tells them, you know, either wake up and, and get busy or else. And, you know, we see that he goes on there and he says, remember from whence thou art fallen. You know, we see that the, the church knew exactly when that began to happen. They knew exactly.
exactly when uh, they had uh, come to the place where uh, that love began to flicker and, and then uh, that flame just completely went out uh, and, and they uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, having church and having uh, God uh, uh, to visit them in their services uh, uh, they began to uh, uh, play church. Uh, they began to just have a service. Uh, and you know we see that they knew and Jesus said remember uh, he said, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Remember. Uh, but then he didn't say just remember, but he says repent. Uh, and he says to repent uh, and, and, and uh, do the first works uh, uh, to get back to what you was doing at first. Now, you know, the sad commentary about this all is they say that the uh, church in Ephesus or the, the groups of uh, individuals that were part of the church in Ephesus uh, that uh, that after just a, a few years, that church was gone. And you know, it's, it's a sad thing, you know, that a uh, church that had been so on uh, fire for the Lord would be there and then it would be gone. And you know, I believe that it was because instead of heeding the warning of Jesus Christ, instead of saying, you know, I, I understand and I realize and getting on the altar and praying and saying, God, uh, forgive me and, and uh, bring revival to this church. Brother Larry was talking about this morning uh, how that uh, revivals used to last two or three weeks and now to have a two-night uh, revival service uh, would be something great. And, and you know, we see that has happened uh, within our churches today. Uh, we see that uh, uh, the churches uh, uh, they don't want uh, to have those services because it come, be, has become too inconvenient. Uh, there's too many things going on. And so you know we see that as we look here you know we see that Jesus said to the church there remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the, thy first work. And then he said if you don't do this if you don't do this, there's going to be consequences. <clears throat> you know, when when mom or dad said something and you didn't do it, there were consequences. You know, we see that our Heavenly Father is, is greater than our moms and dads of this earth, but let me tell you something, there are consequences if you don't listen to what He has to say. And you know, we see here that He said, he said, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. You know, we see that, as I said, you know, the, the church at Ephesus was one that had been there and, and was a thriving church. People were being saved. The, the people of the area were being stirred by the gospel message. You know, we see that it, it had caused such a stir that uh, that uh, Paul had to leave uh, uh, because of it, uh, uh, because people were hearing and, and Satan was being uh, his uh, his. Uh, whole outlook on things and, and everything about Satan was being turned upside down, uh, that Satan's uh, territory was growing smaller, uh, and so he had to begin to fight harder, uh, and we see uh, uh, that uh, uh, that the, the church, uh, uh, instead of being that church uh, that it once was, uh, is a church that is nowhere to be found. And you know, we see that he goes on there and he says, but thou hast, but thou hast, but this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now, you know, we see that the, the, the Nicolaitans were uh, a group of individuals that were uh, saying that, you know, the, the deeds were uh, and also explained in the letter uh, to the church at Pergamos. But we see that something that was, the, the as it speaks here, the, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, uh, to the church at Ephesus became the doctrine of the Nicolaitans at the church of Purpose. 
And you know, we see that the people, uh, the, the problem uh, within the church there, uh, it was a, a practice of, uh, of living lavishly uh, and saying, you know, we can just do whatever we want uh, and, and live however we want uh, uh, and uh, still uh, be a part of uh, the believers. And you know, we see that Jesus said here that the people at, at Ephesus, that they hated the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And you know, we see that he said to them that, you know, you hate this, and, and I do too. And, and so, you know, we see that uh, the church there had a little bit uh, more that they were, uh, that you, you might say that they were uh, found a, a favor in, in the sight of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 7, we see that he gives the exhortation, you might say, uh, to the church there. And we see that in every church, he says the same thing. And we see that he says there to that church, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. He that hath an ear. Now, you know, Jesus wasn't talking about a physical ear like we have. He wasn't talking about these things that stick out on the side of our face and hold, hold our glasses up. But he was talking about that spiritualness that we would hear uh, as the Spirit speak to our hearts uh, and, and uh, listen to what he had to say. You know, we see that all of the churches, uh, uh, he says to them, that he that hath an ear to hear, listen to what the Spirit says, uh, because the Spirit uh, is the guiding force, uh, not only in our individual lives, but in our church lives. Uh, and as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, if we're not listening to the Spirit, uh, then we're way off track. And you know, we see that he says unto the church there, to listen. And hear what the Spirit has to say. And then we see that that last part of this. He says to the church, or to them, he says, To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the tree of life, that is in the midst of the paradise of God. Oh, you know, we see that uh, if you read on, you know, in the book of Revelation, which we will uh, get to later on, uh, we see that the Bible says that it speaks about that tree that is in the midst uh, of the garden and how that it bring forth its fruit every month. And you know, we see that, uh, that he speaks there and he says that this is going to be part of what you get. Uh, if you as believers, uh, as you would overcome uh, this world, uh, that you would get this. You know, we see that Jesus Christ is saying to the church uh, uh, that uh, I've got such great things in store for you uh, when you come into that paradise of God, uh, when you come into that uh, place that has been prepared for you. You know, this morning I said uh, uh, that Jesus, Jesus said, uh, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and get there, I will come again and receive you with myself. And, and he said uh, that where I am, there you may be also. And Jesus said, or John, uh, uh, Thomas said, uh, uh, he said, well, how do we know uh, where you're going? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man cometh unto the Father except through me. So, you know, we see uh, that as believers in Jesus Christ, he said, I'm going away and I'm preparing a place for you. Uh, and and uh, as I go and prepare this, uh, I am coming back and receiving you, that where I am, there you can be also. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we have that home to look forward to. You know, we uh, we may leave this world uh, uh, by death, uh, uh, but you know, we see that uh, that death is only uh, the going falling asleep, and then we'll wake up in that new heaven. And you know, we see that uh, we'll wake up to be with the Lord. But you know, we see that uh, we that are here today, we may be a part of that group that hears as Jesus Christ comes for the church that is raptured to be with him. Oh, you know, wouldn't it be just so great as believers in Jesus Christ that as we would, uh, as we would hear that call and you know, we see that uh, over in 1 Thessalonians it tells us 
You know, he said that, he said that uh, as he spoke, he said that uh, as he comes for the church, he said that the, the church is going to be taken up. And he said that those that are dead are going to rise. And then those that are alive are going to meet them in the end. What a great reunion that's going to be. And you know, he says uh, another thing. We're not going to have this old body. You know, this, this body that needs the glasses, that needs the hearing aids, that needs the, the canes and the walkers and, and, and has the, the back pains and has the, the feet foot pains and has all these different pains. We're not going to need any of that because we're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, what a wonderful thought about when we all uh, leave this world to be with the Lord. Oh, what a, what, a, what a wonderful thought just to, to think about, you know, that Jesus would, as he would come back for the church, and we would be alive as he comes for us. You know, Jesus Christ, as he spoke there to the church at Ephesus, you know, we see that he had some things uh, that they did were doing right, but then they had things that they needed to, to work on. They needed some things that they needed to, to uh, take care of. Some business that they needed to, to take care of. And you know, we see that uh, as the church admitted, you know, we as believers in Jesus Christ, this group of believers, you know, we see that there are many things that, that God can commend us for. But you know, I'm sure that as we would look at our individual selves and we would look at our lives, and I'm not saying I'm looking at your life, but I'm looking at my life, and as we would each one would look at our lives, we could see where we need to improve. The things that he would say, I've got this against you. You need to get it right. You need to get it straightened out. And so we need to come to that place where we serve him as he has to. Tonight, as Jesus speaks to your heart, wherever you're at in your life, you need to know that Jesus Christ loves you and he wants you to live the fullest life for him as possible. You know, we see that the church at Ephesus was a blessed church. I believe that the church here at Midland is a blessed church. God has given us so much and we need to use it for his glory. So tonight, as we get a song, if God is speaking to your heart, if you're here and you, and you feel God is, is speaking to your heart to make a decision for him. Whatever that decision is, I'd like to invite you tonight to come. Next Sunday night, we're going to again go into uh, to that second church, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. But tonight, as you think about what was said, just remember that God is looking at, and he knows each one of our lives.